Kevin here from Epic Gardening, back in the test garden to answer a question that I've been wondering for quite some time. What is the best way to transplant tomatoes? You see so many things recommended. So we're testing the three most popular ones with the exact same tomatoes. These are Cherokee carbon tomatoes that we grew out here from seed, and they're as close to equal looking as I can possibly get them. This is backyard science, my friends. So we're gonna go in with the first method, which is probably the one you see the absolute most, and that would be burying a tomato plant deep. So what I'm gonna do here is remove it from our five inch pot, nice root system. The thing you have to know about tomatoes is they do possess the ability to produce roots along their stem, and that's why people say to bury them deep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove up to here of the leaf matter. So I'm gonna come through with some nice sterilized tools, clip, clip, clip. And the reason you're doing this, of course, is because you don't wanna bury the leaves themselves. It's prone to rotting out, maybe introducing some disease. So you kind of strip this and then you plant it. The root system itself looks pretty good to me, so I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. I might just massage it slightly. So I'm gonna dig a hole about that deep, plant it right about there. And the theory is that I'm gonna get a ton of roots developing along the stem, which should help give that plant the ability to retain more water suck up more nutrients and thus put out more growth. I have my handy tool because I don't like digging deep holes. The power planter, we're going in right here. We'll give this root system just a light massage. Make sure it can get in that hole. You can be a lot more precious with the roots than, a lot less precious, excuse me, than you think. You can kind of beat these boys up a little bit. Nice healthy root system, down we go. No fertilizer for any of these tests. So take a look at that. That just looks pretty much like a tomato that I planted at level that is much more stout, but of course, it is not. So we're gonna put in our label here. This is our buried tomato. By the way, this tomato I'm going to name Titanic because it is sunken down deep. So here we go with the second one. Again, root system's pretty much the same. Now this one's interesting. I'm gonna do the basic method, which is nothing, and just plant it at the level that the soil itself was in the pot. That's as deep as I need to go. No cheating here, no pruning because there's nothing to bury. We'll do the same sort of technique where we just lightly loosen these roots up. We'll toss that in right there. Almost pains me to put it in this way. I almost never plant tomatoes this way. And you know what, while we're at it, let's go ahead and add a stake to each of these. This one doesn't really need it yet, but it eventually will. This one we're gonna name John, because it's probably one of the more basic names out there. Sorry if your name is John, guys. The last one is a weird method. I've seen it a few times. It's certainly not super popular, but You've seen it out there on the internet, so we're going to try it, and it's the laying on its side trench technique. First thing I'm gonna do is just dig out a little bit of a trench. By the way, I know this is like the wildest way to dig a trench ever. I don't really understand, personally, the potential logic behind this planting technique, because if you're gonna bury the tomato stem, ostensibly it's to get more roots, which we just did over here with our boy Titanic. So why would burying it on its side make that much of a difference I don't really know, because then you also have to bend the tomato stem. I'm not sure I'm really down with that either. Nevertheless, I will do it just for you guys. So out we go. Our third Cherokee carbon tomato, which by the way, is a hybridized version of a very classic heirloom tomato called the Cherokee purple and carbon. So it's just a little bit more disease resistant. It's a little bit more vigorous, but has that Cherokee purple flavor that so many heirloom tomato growers know and love. So the idea behind this method, as I understand it is, you wanna come in, bury your root ball on one side. It's kind of an awkward method though because you gotta like plan where this is gonna come out. So you basically do this and then you bend this, which freaks me out. I feel like I don't want to uh, break it or something like that, but nevertheless, it seems like it'll work. The weird part is the roots are no deeper than our basic John tomato over here. It's just about an inch below the soil, just like that one, but you're still gonna get this root development coming on the laterally buried stem. I have to say, I'm not optimistic on this one. All right, I'm gonna call this one Clown because it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a sideshow. We'll see how it does. Right now, I want you guys to comment. Let me know what you think will work and why, but let me explain what's gonna happen. I am not gonna do anything different after this point at all, as best to my ability. I planted these in a triangle so that as the sun moves over the landscape, they have the least amount of interference with one another as far as blocking each other. Sun's gonna come from there, set over there. So even at this point in the day, this one won't block this one as much as you might otherwise think, so important there. I'm gonna fertilize them the exact same, which you'll see, and I will not be pruning any of the suckers off. So these are gonna to get to be some very, very large tomatoes, and we're just gonna see, do we get quicker growth on one of these? Do we get more tomatoes? I have no idea. I'll see you in a couple weeks. We're back at the tomato triad. It's been a couple weeks. 
and let's just see what we see because I see some things I actually don't like and I'm a bit confused by. I will say we've had some very strange weather here at the Epic Homestead. Even just today, it feels like I'm in a discotheque because it's like sunny and then shady and then sunny and then shady. So our buried tomato is starting to flower and it's starting to fruit at this size. Very odd and it's not hot enough, trust me, for it to do that this time of the year, but I am gonna to start to tie these to the stake. So I've got one flower right here forming into a fruit. I've got another cluster right here. I just find that to be quite strange at this time of year. It should be a little bit bigger before it starts doing that, but you know what? It's an experiment. We're just gonna let it run how it runs. And then over here, our surface buried tomato looks pretty good, I have to say. But again, it is also starting to flower. So this one's a little bit taller, but to me it also looks like it's growing faster, I have to say. I don't know exactly why. I, I think it might just be because the tomato didn't have to sort of slow down to throw a lot of roots out on the main stem that wasn't buried, right? Because this one was sown at the surface. And then over here, our trenched tomato, mm, I can't say I'm loving what I'm seeing. I do see a flower cluster here. I see another one starting to form here, but I also see these curled leaves. And I'm thinking that has to do with perhaps just the shock of being transplanted in such an odd way and also having to develop so many roots. This one doesn't even really need to be tied up at all. So, so far the trench seems to be outgrowing slightly the buried and then height wise, of course, the surface sown one would be the tallest, but it also seems to be the most vigorous. So right now my money's on this guy. Back in tomato town, some interesting results. Now, no surprise, the one that was buried at surface level is the tallest by a considerable margin, at least eight inches, maybe up to a foot or so over both of the other methods. And if you notice here, there's a good amount of fruit. I count five plus another four plus another one. So there's 10 developing fruit on this plant here. And our buried stem has, looks like three fruit developing. And then over here, our trenched has another three developing. Now that could just be a function of the height. It could be a function of the plant slowing down because it needs to put out more roots underground before it can start really building its development above the ground. I'm not really sure yet, but I'm pretty surprised, I guess, by these results. You would imagine that maybe this one is gonna have like a late push and it's gonna outcompete this one eventually because there should be actually more roots on both of these methods. But in a couple of weeks, we're going to see exactly what happens. I am very puzzled. Let me know down in the comments what you think is gonna happen at this point. We're back, my friends, with the triple tomato experiment. I have to say, the surface buried tomato is still performing the best. It's quite a bit taller, I would say at least six inches to a foot taller, certainly than our buried stem over here. And fruit development is quite nice. I've got three sizable ones here, three or four here, and another four or five there. So over 10 on this plant here, and only three on our buried plant here, but they're pretty decently sized. All the plants look healthy, but the trenched one over here seems to be not only catching up to the buried one, but somehow exceeding, because if I was to you know, match this height, kind of draw it over this way. We're a couple inches higher on this main stem. The only thing I could possibly attribute that to, because these were both buried, one was just trenched, is that the trenched one, instead of being buried straight down, was buried at the surface horizontally, right? So what that might have done is caused a little bit more soil warmth than that top layer, which might have spurred on root development faster. So this plant has more ability to suck up water nutrients and grow just a bit faster, but still none of them are beating good old tried and true, planting it at the surface. And I've got three fruit on this one as well. So these ones are kind of tied. Uh, there's some young fruit developing in the canopy here, but we'll have to see. Right now, my horse is on our surface buried tomato. The moment of truth, my friends. We are at the end of our growing journey. Let's analyze what exactly went down over the course of these growing out. So if you remember, we have Titanic, our buried tomato. We have John, our basic surface transplanted tomato. And then over here, we have Clown, our trenched and slightly buried tomato. Let's look at the height first. Now they all outgrew their trellis, so I didn't update that, but if we just kind of hold these up here, we can tell that it looks like Clown is the second tallest, John is the tallest, and Titanic is just barely beaten 
by John. No surprise here, John is our tallest. It was transplanted the highest up in the sense that it wasn't buried at all. So I'm not really surprised by that. I am a bit surprised that the trenched one slightly outgrew the buried one. Because I think on the net, I buried a little bit more of this one underground just because you have to trench it and then pull it upwards. But let's look at the rest of the growth. Now, from a fruit perspective, this is what I was very interested to find. I did not see that many fruit over here on Titanic until later on in the plant's life. So right now, I've got 14 fruit on Titanic and I believe I lost one to a raccoon. So let's call that about 15. But over here on John, I was very surprised that I just had a lot of fruit really early on this plant, but none of them ripened. So both Titanic, our sunken, and Clown, our trenched tomato, both of those had fruit ripened faster, but less overall fruit. Cause let's take a look at this one. So on John, I have 19 tomatoes. One of them has been eaten. It looks like another fell off. So actually that's 20 and only one or two are even close to ripe. So I got way more overall fruit production here, but I didn't really get a lot of ripeness. Over here on Clown, we've got 12 that I can see and I know for a fact I lost two. So let's call that anywhere from 13 to 14. I'm gonna dig all these up in a second because I'm very curious what the roots look like, especially of the ones that we buried. But initially what I see is there's no sort of shock to burying deeper on John, our surface transplanted tomato. So what I think happened here is it could just really get to growing. It could get to putting out leafy growth and fruit developing a lot faster because it didn't have to either put out roots along the trench or roots along the buried stem. These two feel like they were a little bit behind because they had to set up more roots underground first instead of just working with the roots they have. But now I am very curious to see what these plants look like. I'm gonna dig them up as best as I can and then I'm actually gonna analyze the roots. So here we have John's root system, pretty small. Obviously a lot of those feeder roots are still in the soil, but you can tell there's a big clump of roots here, nice healthy white roots kind of fanning out naturally. I suspect because I was able to just surface transplant this, they didn't really have to adapt too much. They didn't have to do anything. And I had a nice healthy plant here. So this is probably the most boring example. Let's see what's underneath Titanic. So here we have our boy Titanic. And honestly, I'm a little surprised. I don't see as much root development as I thought I'd see up this buried portion of the stem. The stem was buried right about here or so, maybe even here. And you do see some root development. So you see an entire new clump coming out right here. It's really not that many roots compared to this root ball. And this root ball does look a little bit smaller and less robust than our basic John over here. So I'm a little bit surprised. That being said, still a decent amount of tomatoes on this plant. And here we go with Clown, the hardest one to dig up. So here we have Clown. And would you look at this? This is actually fascinating to me. So you can see where the trench was created. So this was the trenched area right here. And I see dramatically more root development across this trenched area than I did with our sad girl Titanic over here and actually more base root growth or at least the same amount as I did on John. So for some reason, the trenched method, I mean, look at this root right here. This is a crazy root and it's actually growing horizontally because this is how it was buried. So this is growing out this way towards kind of the base of the stem, which is really bizarre. This root was basically growing up in a way. And you've got a lot more clumped roots here. You've got a lot more roots here. Overall, more fibrous structure here and a decent amount here. So the only hypothesis I have as to why this might have had different results than burying is actually something Jacques brought up on our team. He was mentioning that because you're trenching and you're layering it horizontally, the soil temperature in the trenched area is on average warmer than if you were to bury it very deep like we did with Titanic and certainly more of the stem is exposed to those warm temperatures than if you don't bury the stem at all. So you see a lot of crazy root development here. I'm gonna do a very rough measurement of height from root to stem tip, see what I get. Looks like on Titanic, I'm at about 69 inches. On John, we're at about 75, 76 inches. And on Clown, we're probably at about 72 inches. So if you ask me, is there a best tomato transplanting method? I think the answer is not really. You can do whatever you want and you'll get a result. All of these I would be perfectly happy to have in my garden for simplicity's sake, 
I probably would just surface sew it like old John here. Why not? Saves me some time. If I was going to do something, maybe I would trench it. I had some good results, but this is backyard science. It's not a perfect experiment. If you have any experience with this, drop me a comment. And if you want to learn how to grow tomatoes even better, check our playlist out right here. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.